Good morning folks, we are back into six weeks of lockdown again uh, and this time in particular we even have a night time curfew until the 2nd of January. So as what we've done before during um, lockdown, let's turn to God's word and let's spend these next six weeks um, just in the morning starting off by reading together. Uh, slightly later this morning. Um, but in future probably about half nine every morning, Monday to Friday. And, well, our governments are arguing over wisdom and who's got the right way and who doesn't have the right way at this time. Um, so it seems appropriate that during this time that we would read a bit of wisdom from God's Word. Um, read from someone who was credited as being wise, from Solomon. And let's read Proverbs during this time together. Uh, they can be very difficult to understand at times. All the times they give us things which are very clear. But you know what? Let's just take a, a day at a time and let's read Proverbs together. So this morning, um, on this Tuesday morning, we're going to start off with Proverbs chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading, as usual, from the New Living Translation. So let's hear what it has to say. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them do what is right, just and fair. These proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. Let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance. By exploring the meanings in these proverbs and parables, the words of the wisdom of the wise and their riddles. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. My child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. What you learn from them will crown you with grace and be a chain of honour around your neck. My child, if sinners entice you, turn your back on them. They may say, come and join us. Let's hide and kill someone. Just for fun, let's ambush the innocent. Let's swallow them alive at the grave. Let's swallow them whole like those who go down to the pit of death. Think of the great things we get. We'll fill our houses with all the stuff we take. Come through in your lot with us and we'll all share the loot. My child, don't go along with them. Stay far away from their paths. <clears throat> they rush to commit evil deeds. They hurry to commit murder. If a bird sees a trap being set, it knows to stay away. But these people set an ambush for themselves. They're trying to get themselves killed. Such is the fate of all who are greedy for money. It robs them of life. Wisdom shouts in the streets, she cries in the public square. She calls to the crowds along the main streets, to those gathered in front of the city gate. How long, you simpletons, will you insist on being um, simple-minded? How long will you mockers relish your mocking? How long will you fools hate knowledge? Come and listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you and make you wise. I called to you so often, but you wouldn't come out. I reached out to you, but you paid no attention. You ignored my advice and rejected the correction I offered. So I laughed when you were in trouble. I mocked when disaster overtakes you, when calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster engulfs you like a cyclone, and anguish and distress overwhelm you. When they cry for help, I will not answer. Though they anxiously search for me, they will not find me. For they hated knowledge and chose not to fear the Lord. They rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way, choking on their own schemes. For simpletons turn away from me to death. Fools are destroyed by their own complacency. But those who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by fear of harm. Amen the end of um, Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs is a strange book. It's a book at times which seems to be full of contradictions. 
but it starts off in a very simple way saying that we need wisdom. Now, some people maybe feel that Solomon is talking down a lot of times. They may feel insulted because he talks about people who are simple, people who don't understand. But verse 7, Fear the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fills us by wisdom and discipline. That fear of the Lord is not fear as in <gasps> disaster, but it's fear as in reverence, fear as in respect, as in understanding who God is and being prepared to listen to God and learn from God. And Solomon just right at the very start says, look, if you want to have wisdom, then understand this world. Understand who has made it, who's created it. Understand who is ultimately in control. And when you start to understand that, then everything else will start to fall into place. The problem is, people don't. They turn their back and they reject God. And because they reject God, nothing else seems to make sense. Nothing else figures out correctly for them. They, they, they run around chasing their tails. But whenever we have God first in our lives, then yes, things are still hard. Things are still difficult. No one will deny that. Life on this earth is hard, but by putting God first, then everything else starts to make sense. Everything else starts to fall into place. We start to realise what it's all about. And we're going to explore that. And again, Proverbs at times, it will say things, but there are ways of interpreting, ways of understanding, ways of seeing what Solomon is on about. There is wisdom beyond the wisdom nearly as such, in that as he says things, which people can understand in earthly terms, then we have to look at it, what it means in heavenly terms uh, and what it means to, to, to seek God's wisdom. So in a simple way, from Proverbs chapter 1, understand who God is. Understand what he has done for you. Understand that he shows or wants to show us the right path. Just as Solomon talks here about uh, not laying a trap. A bird can see a trap that's led that doesn't go that way. Um, it, we should be able to see the traps which people set for one another. We should be able to see the pitfalls which are there if we view things through God's eyes. And then we should avoid those things. We don't always. We quite often walk into things blindly. We quite often walk in knowing that things will trip us up. But we need to learn from that and then change. So let's read over this next while Proverbs together. Let's see what wisdom Solomon wants to impart and let's see how then God shows us how we can apply that to our everyday lives um, so that we can grow closer to him each day. So thanks for joining me this morning, folks. Let's pause and let's pray. And let's pray for wisdom for our land, wisdom for our leaders, and also wisdom for us. Um, we have choices to make in this as well. And all we are doing, choices about um, looking after one another, choices about um, being sensible. So let's pray for all of that in a time when our land really needs us to come together as followers of Christ, Christians, as believers, and to pray for this land. So let's pause. Let's pray together. Father, again, thank you for this morning. We thank you for the times that we've had with our families, um, maybe different from what we had expected over these last few days, Lord. Um, just as we have celebrated the, the coming of your son Jesus, his birth. Lord, as we start to get back into a routine again, we just pray for your guidance and your help. We pray for guidance and help for our leaders in our land um, as they look at the best way of protecting our people of looking after our children in school, looking after those who are in work or those who can't get to work, how to protect them and provide for them. And Lord, for us as well, as we play our part in this, as we look at what we are doing, um, Lord, help us to be responsible and sensible. Lord, even from the point of view of church, help us to be sensible as we look out for the well-being of others um, and help us to be able to still reach out, but be careful in what we're doing. And Lord, in, in our everyday lives, in all that we do individually, 
Help us to be considerate of others, to be able to use this opportunity, this time, Lord, as a way of showing your love and concern again for others. And Lord, for those who are struggling, um, please just draw alongside them and help them at this time. But Father, we thank you that we can do this together. We thank you that we can read your word together. We thank you that we can we can talk to you um, and, and that we can do this freely and openly. And Lord, we just pray that over this next while again, as we again, as we meet together and read your word together, that you would speak to us, that you would teach us, that you would impart your wisdom to us, and then help us to apply it to our everyday lives. So Lord, help us to realise who you are, what you have done for us, that you have always our best intentions at heart, and help us to follow the path that you have led out in front of us. Lord, thank you. Continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining with me this morning. Um, trust that I see you again tomorrow morning round about half nine. Until then, take care and God bless. Bye-bye.